Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Beck and this is Amy, uh, if you're new to our channel. So today's topic is all about tips for healthy and naturally thick hair. You know, we know that of course genetics play a big role in the texture and the natural thickness of our hair, but what we put into our bodies and how we treat our hair also has a big impact on how it feels, how it looks and the thickness and quality of the hair. Mm. And it really forms a big part of like how youthful and healthy you look, the hair, skin, nails. Yeah, it really goes for your skin as well. Because I know growing up I used to think that that was a bit of a myth. The whole idea that what you eat could impact your skin just seemed, mm. I don't know, maybe because people would, you know, say things like, oh, if you eat chocolate, your skin will be bad. You'd be mm. like, eh, that's what not I'm true. Like, I just need some like proactive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me like the stuff that works. I don't want to change mm. my food. But when we really look at it, you know, what we're eating, you know, everything that we eat is broken down, assimilated and used to really build our bodies. So mm. what we put in makes a big difference with mm. things like our hair. So without further ado, we're going to jump into eight secrets for naturally thick and healthy hair. So our first tip is to make sure you're consuming enough protein. So our hair is made predominantly of protein, just like our nails. So you need to provide your body with the building blocks to make that healthy hair. And I think women in particular, we can be prone to not getting enough protein in our diet. You know, I feel that men at some stage in their life get interested in putting on muscle, you know, becoming bigger and stronger. And so they're more focused on getting that mm. protein. Whereas and women, women, we can let it go by the wayside. Yeah. And I find with women, there's also usually that aversion to eating meat. Mm. Sometimes it's a bit more common than in men. And that's not to say you can't get protein from plant sources as well, but meat is obviously a good yeah. complete source of protein. You know, so it really depends on your activity level, stress and other factors, but you may want to shoot between around 20 to 30 percent of your um, daily calories from protein. Mm. So for many women it's going to work out to about a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Yeah, you know, the best places to get protein are from whole food sources and in particular animal products if you consume animal products because these are complete sources of protein so they have a complete range of the essential amino acids mm. that your body needs to make healthy hair and they also contain iron mm. so red meats in particular contain iron which we know is really important for hair growth and can help with hair loss you know oftentimes people with an iron deficiency one of the signs is hair fall you can also obviously top up your protein intake with protein powders so you can get good quality uh, whey protein so like a grass-fed whey protein if you tolerate dairy or you could look into hydrolyzed beef protein. Egg white protein is a popular paleo protein. It's not something I've mm -hmm. tried personally before. I always feel a bit weird about egg white protein. Yeah. You'd think it would be quite reactive, but a, a lot, lot of people, people do like use it. it and like it. So uh, if that works for you, then that's great. And also, of course, there's lots of plant sources of protein powders. So you've got your fermented brown rice protein, pea proteins, etc. So it's quite fine just to take a protein shake, especially after a workout and things like that, and that will bring up your protein levels quite a lot. Okay, so our second tip following on from increasing your protein intake is to supplement with a good collagen powder. So collagen has been shown to increase the strength and the elasticity of our hair, and it's really high in some of those amino acids that have been shown to benefit our hair. So that includes arginine, in particular, has been shown to be really beneficial for our hair growth. And a really big point around collagen powders is that they are great for supplying those amino acids that we don't really get through muscle meats, mm -hmm. or we do but in very small amounts. So traditionally, when you think about it, we would have been eating more nose to tail. So we would have really been eating the whole animal. So that includes, you know, the organ meats and the connective tissues. Mm, those, those cuts that we don't really mm. go for anymore. We just go for the steaks. Yeah, we're just going for that muscle meat. So another point here is that when we start to eat lots of muscle meats, we get a really high dose of methionine. So methionine actually raises homocysteine, which is detrimental to our health. So homocysteine in high levels has been shown to contribute to several different chronic diseases and it's really bad for our cardiovascular health. So glycine, which is rich in collagen, actually offsets the effects of methionine. So it really stimulates those liver pathways that help to detoxify methionine and get rid of that extra methionine. So you can see that like when we 
eat animal products in the way that we were mm. meant to, it's actually so much healthier for our mm. body. And you know, also the collagen has that good arginine in there. Um, and there was an interesting study that looked at the increase in the hair diameter. So like each hair was growing through thicker mm. and more like stronger mm. <laughs> using gelatin or collagen supplement. And the confusion around gelatin versus collagen, they're really pretty much the same mm. thing. So collagen is just, I guess, the whole food form, which is quite difficult to eat. Mm. But when you heat that up, say in a broth or with some of the supplements mm. that are powdered, then it becomes gelatin. So it's like the cooked version of collagen is gelatin. Yeah. <laughs> So there are a couple of different brands that do collagen supplements. So the one that I have at the moment is Great Lakes, but you can also get from Vital Proteins, very similar or pretty much the exact same product. Same product. Um, so here we have gelatin, which as I said before, is like the cooked version of collagen. This is great for adding to soups, stews, mm, broths, soups hot things. and it goes in, yeah, so it dissolves into hot beverages. So it's important to note for cooking that this is the type of product that you want to buy to make jellies, to make marshmallows and all of those kind of paleo treats. So on the other hand we have the hydrolyzed collagen powder. So to make things a bit more confusing, hydrolyzed collagen is another form of collagen which is more processed. So what it is is those long chain aminos have been broken down further into their individual parts so it's easier to digest. And it also is really handy because it dissolves into hot and cold liquids. Mm. It's so no good for making jellies. So if you're yeah. looking to make desserts and things, this is not the product. But if you want to add collagen to your cold smoothies and yogurts, mm. all different cold things, it completely dissolves and has no taste. So our third tip is to make sure that you're getting enough B vitamins and vitamin C. So B vitamins, in particular biotin is one that you'll hear very often, is very beneficial for our hair growth. Biotin in particular is made by our gut flora and so are a number of other B vitamins. So when we're looking at B vitamins, you really want to make sure that your gut health is on point. So, you know, doing a lot of fermented foods and prebiotics and things to really improve your gut health. But aside from that, B vitamins are really high in things like liver, avocado, eggs, and salmon. So those are some really great whole food sources that you can look at if you want to boost your B vitamins. So then we also have vitamin C. So vitamin C is needed to produce collagen and it also helps with the uptake of iron in the gut. And we know that low iron can contribute to hair loss and things like that. So making sure that you're getting enough vitamin C is really important. And of course, vitamin C is quite easy to get. It's in a lot of different fruits and vegetables. So particularly uh, citrus, so things like oranges, lemons, limes, all that good stuff. So our fourth tip for healthy hair is to make sure you're getting enough healthy fats into your diet. So in particular, we want to talk about omega-3 fatty acids, so our EPA and DHA. These fatty acids really nourish the hair, mm -hmm. so they've also been shown, again, to improve the diameter of the hairs individually and also the strength. So we want to be getting enough omega-3s from either mm -hmm. our diet or, if that's not sufficient, from some supplementation. So, of course, our cold water fatty fish like sardines, mackerel, mm -hmm. salmon, tuna are all important for getting those omega-3s but we can also supplement by taking our favorite which is cod liver oil mm. or you may want to look into fish oil although there can be some complications if you're taking like blood thinners yeah things. if you're taking blood thinners and things because uh, the high dose fish oils can further thin the blood so make sure you're getting enough of those healthy fats So our fifth tip is don't wash your hair every day and if you can, avoid SLS in your shampoo and conditioner. So washing your hair every day will really strip away all the natural oils in your hair and create that really dry, brittle hair. And the same goes with SLS. So SLS is found in a number of hair care products. So if you look at, you know, all your conventional shampoos and conditioners, you'll probably find some form of SLS in there. And it has many different names that you can look out for. But SLS is quite a stripping ingredient. It's actually. very harsh on the yeah. hair and it's been linked, I believe, to negative health consequences mm. beyond 
it's an um, irritant so mm -hmm. on the skin it can irritate your skin and some people will be very sensitive to SLS mm. but it also just really gets that that squeaky clean mm. hair and it's kind of addictive because it feels good to like get your scalp so super clean mm. so it's that agent that really creates that bubbly foamy feeling like mm. when you get that really good lather and that's one of the reasons why a lot of natural shampoos can't really deliver that same amount of like bubbly good lather mm. But I really found that over time, like switching away from SLS products, my hair is a lot more resilient, mm. especially to heat products or well, heat damage. Yeah, I actually used a conventional shampoo the other day. I'd usually use a natural one, but I ran out and I used up some dregs of an old one. And my hair felt so dry. dry. I was very surprised. And I feel that I used to actually need to use like heat protectants and things mm. on my hair because it was just already so dry from my shampoo that you mm. know I couldn't get away with you know using my curling mm. iron or anything on it without the heat protectant but and these don't days I don't, don't use it at all. Anymore. I don't use anything on it for heat protectant and it's fine. my hair is fine from and I mm. curl it like every time I wash it. Mm. So there you go. It's like buying a product to need another product. <laughs> They keep you in the cycle. So tip number six is to brush through your natural oils. So, you know, there's a lot of negative things about having oily hair. It doesn't look very nice, it doesn't feel very nice. But when you do get that greasy hair, it's really good to make sure that you brush it through. If you're going to have greasy hair for a day and you're going to wear it up, you may as well make the best of it. It's like those, natural, natural those natural oils really treat your hair and keep it healthy. I mean, that's what they're for, right? <laughs> for healthy scalp and everything. So tip number seven is to air dry your hair whenever you can. So the hair dryer can really as well cause your hair to become really dried out and brittle. And I feel like, yeah, it's even worse than using, say, a straightener because... I find that when I dry my hair with the blow dryer, it just makes it feel really fried mm. and especially, you know, I have coloured hair, yeah. or bleached hair, and so do you, obviously. Mm. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it just comes out feeling really crispy, whereas if mm. I at least let the first stage dry naturally, I can then use my straightening iron. Yeah, so it's not about, you know, never using any of these heating products but um, you know, minimizing it where you can, so where you don't really need it, you know, mm. if you don't need your hair to be dry instantly, just let it air dry. Mm. Or even let it air dry like 90% of the way mm. and then finish it yeah. off to get that straighter effect Look, if yeah. you like to do that. But that's really made a big difference to my hair, especially since I've bleached it. So our eighth and final tip is to use a leave-in treatment. Now, we like to use oils. I, in particular, like to use a blend with coconut oil. Mm -hmm. And I just run that through the ends of my hair pretty much every time I wash it or just after I've styled it. It really puts a lot of shine into mm -hmm. the hair and also protects it from moisture loss. Mm -hmm. So you don't need anything fancy for this. You could literally no, use thing. coconut oil. I use olive oil sometimes yeah. as well. It's pretty much any oil that you have in your cupboard. Mm -hmm. Although coconut oil is a good one because it's also going to be antifungal. So if you're doing you know, a lot of sports and things, mm -hmm. you're getting really sweaty, it's kind mm -hmm. of just good to put in something that's going to be a little bit antimicrobial. Yeah, especially like if you wanted to do a deep treatment mm -hmm. with coconut oil onto your scalp as well. That can help yeah. with rebalancing the oil production too, I find. Mm. Like really getting a lot of oils into the scalp. Mm. And if you suffer with dandruff and things, it can also help. But I have a couple here to show which are really good for using on the hair. So we have the Josie Moran 100% Pure Argan Oil. So a couple of drops of this run into the bottom of your hair. Will not make it greasy or anything, just mm. give it a bit of shine and moisture. I have another little one from Leilani, so this is the coconut infusion, so this is a blend of a few different oils and it smells really good, but I actually prefer for a coconut oil this one by Acure just because it has the spray top, spray so top. you can just easily put a pump into the mm. palm of your hand and then run it through the ends, and it smells really good, this is a really summery coconutty treatment that you can use, it's a body oil, 
that mm. also works really well. multi -purpose. So those were our eight tips for naturally thick and healthy hair. We hope that you really enjoyed those and found some things that you can go away and put into action and hopefully see some results in your hair. If you have any questions for us, please leave them in the comments below. We read through all the comments and try to get to as many as we can. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.